Thank you, Dr. Danse, and uh, thank you to the organizers for inviting me and uh, giving me the opportunity to meet with so many wonderful people. I will be talking about um, the top 10 applications of spectral CT in the emergency department in my experience. Uh, these are in no particular order, but I will start with incident loma characterization. Here's an incidental adrenal nodule that is indeterminate on conventional CT. On virtual non-contrast, it's less than 10 Hounsfield units. That's consistent with a benign adenoma. It does not need any further workup. Um, I did find an old MRI on this patient, and you can see complete signal drop-off on the outer face images, which is consistent with benign adenoma. Uh, this is an indeterminate lesion in a transplant kidney. You put magic glass. It's hyperdense on the virtual non-contrast, no iodine uptake. This is a hemorrhagic cyst. You resolve this in seconds. When administrators see this ability to reduce follow-up workup exams, they see dollar signs. Uh, but to me, that is not the biggest advantage of spectral CT for incident lomas. For me, the biggest advantage is that it can expedite workup of suspicious lesions. As our clinicians and our patients are drowning in the tsunami of incidental lesions, you can find the ones that truly need to be expedited. Here's a kidney lesion. It would be indeterminate, a wishy-washy report. But you look, it enhances compared to virtual non-contrast, clear iodine uptake. Uh, this needs to be resected. This was a cl um, classic papillary cancer on histopathology. Sorry. Uh, I find sus unsuspected MIs with spectral CT on a regular basis. Uh, the next slide is a couple of screenshots from a popular ECG blog where the author talks about a trauma patient where I diagnosed an acute MI on spectral CT based on absent iodine uptake in the LAD territory. The EKG was obtained after the CT interpretation and confirmed the acute MI. The author goes on to say that I am a wizard. But I must tell you that that is not true. I'm not a wizard, and you do not need black magic to diagnose acute MIs on CT. All you need to do is to pay really close attention to iodine maps. So here's a patient who was in a high-speed MVC. By the time the medics got to him, he was in VFib arrest. You look at the CT scan and see a perfusion defect in the anterior wall. This completely changes the trajectory of this patient. This patient's motor vehicle accident was because of the MI. Um, he went to the cath lab and got his LAD fixed used to be that we could not really diagnose subsegmental PEs with any degree of confidence. But with spectral CT, I look for the perfusion defect on the iodine map, look at the 40 kE images, and here you can diagnose this small subsegmental PE with really high degree of confidence. A month later, study is repeated, the clot is gone. My residents actually start by looking at the iodine map, and you can find the perfusion defect then you look for the subsegmental PE. You can actually get a lot faster by using spectral CT if you use these kind of tricks. Uh, one physiologic phenomenon that you need to be aware of is the eula lilly strand mechanism or pulmonary hypoxic vasoconstriction. You see a perfusion defect here in the, right lower, in the left lower lobe. That's because of a mucus plug in the left lower lobe bronchus. We can use spectral CT to reduce contrast dose because the lower KV images significantly increase the attenuation of iodine. Uh, so we can do a CTA of the abdomen and pelvis with 16 ml. Dr. Dueck talk, showed some really good cases and applications of this. Uh, on the low KV images, you see perfect enhancement of the vascular bed. We can also do this in bigger patients. This is a patient with a BMI of 51, and that's a perfectly diagnostic uh, CT angiogram of the thoracic aorta with 28 ml. Now, reducing contrast dose was a niche application. Nobody particularly cared about it until about six weeks ago when we ran out of contrast in the United States. So we started doing a lot of ultra-low-dose scans with, in this example, 28 ml of Omnipig. A lot of institutions in the U.S. were canceling or postponing outpatients. We did not cancel one scan. We scanned everyone. We just saved our contrast by using ultra-low-dose protocols. The same principle can be used to salvage a poor bolus. So here's a patient with a PE study. It's completely non-diagnostic on the conventional images. But you look at 40 keV, the attenuation of the main pulmonary artery is high. In combination with the iodine map, you can see there is no perfusion defect. This patient does not have a PE. You do not need to repeat the scan. That's a big deal for our patients. Uh, the next, I, uh, you can use calcium suppression images to look for marrow abnormalities and trauma and malignancy, but I'm very careful what I say about this because I have an expert speaker coming up in a little bit. Uh, but just show you a couple of examples. This is a, a tibial microfracture, just nicely corresponding to the MRI. 
Um, here's a, a patient with trauma. There's a compression fracture in the thoracic spine based on the marrow um, edema. You can tell that this is acute. Um, this is a patient with uh, lung cancer. Bone windows look normal, but you look at calcium suppression and there's multiple vertebral lesions corresponding perfectly to um, the uh, MRI. Now, one interesting use of calcium suppression is in separating bullet fragments from bone fragments. So these are two separate gunshots to the head, and you put calcium suppression, and the bone suppresses, goes black, and the bullet remains white. I hope you don't see much of this here. I see this every day, so I need to get good at it. Um, stone characterization is one of the oldest spectral CT applications there is. So here's a uric acid stone, just nicely characterized, confirmed on, uh, after extraction. Uh, this patient has a stone in the left kidney and a kidney mass. So spectral CT shows that the stone is made of uric acid and the mass is just a hemorrhagic cyst. So this shows how spectral CT can be a one-stop shop in emergency imaging. And of course, we can characterize uric acid deposits and gout and make these really pretty pictures. Uh, timely diagnosis of bowel ischemia is absolutely critical on CT because the clinical diagnosis is very difficult. Um, this is a person who presents with abdominal pain for a few hours and right off the bat, you can see most of this bowel is ischemic, and um, this is a closed-loop obstruction. Uh, this patient did really good. They went to the OR. They were discharged in three days. But that's because we were able to give a speedy and accurate diagnosis. If you're not able to diagnose this in a timely fashion, this can go in a whole different pathway. This is a femoral hernia that's ischemic. Again, very, very straightforward with spectral CT. Even when you have pretty obvious abnormality, like in this case, the SMA is occluded. Uh, spectral CT can tell you the extent of ischemia really well. So these right lower quadrant bowel loops, they look completely normal on conventional images. But on spectral CT, there is no iodine uptake in these loops. 80 centimeter of bowel was resected in the OR. Uh, in trauma, absent iodine uptake in bowel loops is a very, very good indication of bowel injury. This loop in the pelvis that you see has no iodine uptake. I, you can see that loop. It's a U-shaped loop. This was a bucket handle tear that was confirmed on surgery. Spectral CT uh, is really good for picking up radiolucent gallstones, and this is because the attenuation of um, the spectral curves of bile and gallstones are very, very different, uh, even though they look identical at 70 keV, which is where you obtain conventional images. Um, in the setting of acute cholecystitis, not only can you pick up the radiolucent gallstones, but you can also pick up really nicely the hot rim sign and help you make the diagnosis with confidence. Now, the ultrasound in this patient is actually kind of unimpressive. I'm not, in the US, I don't think ultrasound does that great for acute cholecystitis for a whole host of reasons. But there is more. On the same case, you look at the gallbladder wall on the iodine map, and there is no uptake of iodine in the gallbladder wall. This is a necrotic gallbladder, which was confirmed on surgery. And on PATH, you can see the gallbladder mucosa is completely denuded. Now, for those of you who are histologically challenged like me, that's the normal gallbladder mucosa. Uh, this patient presents with acute pancreatitis, fairly obvious, but you look at the um, iodine overlay, and you can see that the most of the pancreas is necrotic, and you look at the effective atomic number overlay, and you can nicely see gallstones in the gallbladder. Again, showing you the one-stop one shop in emergency imaging that you can do with spectral CT. Spectral CT is really good for detection of acute bleeding. I'm just going to skip to the next slide. Uh, in GI bleed, you can eliminate virtual non-contrast, and you can nicely see a duodenal bleeder. Uh, you can eliminate a true non-contrast non acquisition. Here you can see a nice bleeder in the duodenum that was confirmed on angiography. Um, this patient presented with abdominal pain and a low hemoglobin, and it just looks like a nasty-looking liver. But you put spectral CT, and you can see the entire left lobe is a hepatocellular carcinoma, and you can so nicely see the hemorrhage that's next to the left lobe. So this is a HCC that bled, and you can also nicely see the uh, tumor thrombus in the left portal vein on spectral CT. Um, this patient showed up to his every follow-up exam high on cocaine, so they never treated him. A year later, he comes back to the ED, and his tumor is gone. And this is a spontaneous regression of NHCC, and just reminds me that life is uh, capable of magic sometimes. 
couple of problem solving situations that you can use it, you, you will find it useful in interesting and unanticipated ways. So here's a patient with infiltrates in the lungs. They did not know what these infiltrates were from. Put on iodine map. Uh, this patient was on amiodarone, and this is amiodarone toxicity. The patient was put on steroids, taken off of amiodarone. Um, two months later, patient's a lot better. Um, this patient, next patient presents with, uh, in shock and has uh, ascites, that is 26 Hounsville units. This is a CT angiogram. So the question was, um, is this a hemoperitoneum? But you put iodine on it, and there is iodine uptake in the ascites in a patient in shock. Turns out the patient had a CT angiogram of the lungs the day before, and this is vicarious excretion of contrast in the ascites in a patient in renal failure. Um, that is something before you just couldn't diagnose. Um, so you'll find it useful in scenarios like this. With that, uh, thank you, and I think my time is up. Thank you, Dr. Punjabi, for this overview of what we can see when we are using such tools.